Let's go out to Gretchen in Pittsburgh. What's up, Gretchen? Hi, Dr. John. This is cool hearing you through my phone. I it's, listen to you all the time on YouTube. It's cool hearing you through my phone. Very cool. What's up? So uh, my question for you is, um, I, oh gosh, how do I say this? I really. Uh, hey, Gretchen, um, we are way past that on this show. Just say whatever. <laughs> I know, good. I know, I know. But it's always more nerve wracking once with you. Um, so I really do not like sex. Okay. Um, I, I, I think the word I use is like, I resent it. I resent sex as a whole, partially just, I think it's due to a lot of things for me. It's, it feels very mandatory. Um, I also just have this feeling like I genuinely don't need it. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's causing issues because I know my husband needs it. I was going to say, are you married? <laughs> yeah. I am married. Okay. I've been married for um, about 15 months. And I actually didn't, I did not have sex before marriage. I was a virgin when I got married. Um, and we kind of didn't anticipate any issues in, in this regard because granted, even in the confines of trying to remain a virgin before marriage, you know, you still, you make out and, and you feel a passionate connection towards one another. And then I got married and it feel like felt like it went away. Mm. Um, and now it's to the point where I have absolutely no interest in having sex with my husband yeah. at all. Yeah. None. Um, and I'm not hundred percent sure why I could probably come up with a list of possible reasons, but I just, and I'm kind of at a point where I don't really know what to do about it because I know well, I may not need it. I know he needs it. And it's getting very challenging for me because I'm just kind of in this, please don't touch me. I don't want to be touched. I don't, sure. I don't feel like this doing this today. And even on the times that I kind of muster up enough to have sex with my husband. I mean, I enjoy it once I get there, mm -hmm. but getting there is like very hard for me. Yeah. Um, and I'm, and again, I'm at a point where I like, I don't really know what to do about it. And I want to fix it because I, I want to want to have sex. Of course. But I, I don't. Excellent. Well, number one, thank you for saying that out loud. I imagine you're not telling a whole bunch of people that. Is that fair? No, I think I've mentioned it to two girlfriends. Okay. One agreed with me and one was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to run through. So number one, I want you to know you are absolutely not crazy. You're not alone. Okay. And not alone to the tune of millions. Okay. So you're not nuts. Cool. Good. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm going to run through a series of questions that I always ask folks in this situation. Okay. Yes. Um, but before I do that, I want to at first acknowledge it happens a lot for people who uh, choose to remain a virgin till they're married is that sex becomes to, to use religious imagery becomes an idol. It becomes a thing that is going to solve and fix all things. And it's going to be um, like you probably heard it said in your religious organization, your bodies will just know what to do and it will just be this syncing up and this magic, whatever. And I'm just, I, I just don't think that's accurate. Um, yeah, and, I'll agree. And so there's this powerful pressure put on it. And not only that, as a woman, you have this performance pressure and this Instagram world pressure that you've got to compete with, fill in the blanks, all those things. Um, you and your husband are, how old are you? I'm 25. Yeah. So we, I was just talking about this earlier on in the show. Y'all both were raised in a culture, whether y'all participated or not, that was raised entirely by pornography. And so the, either the images or the, this is what it's supposed to look like. And this is, we're all supposed to be screaming and yelling and having chaos. And it's supposed to be fun and exciting. And the wallpaper is just supposed to fall off the walls on its own. And the house catches on fire. That's the world that we've all, that you've been handed. This is what it's supposed to look like. And there's no playbook for the weird, awkward, what are you do uh, that is real sex, especially as a couple's getting to know each other. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's no, and so everything feels like failure or screwing up. I don't like this. And depending on our bodies, 
some of our, and this is about experience, this is about um, genetics, this is about a whole cascade of things. Some bodies respond to failure and to this isn't working right and this isn't what looks, this was, wasn't what my picture was. They respond to that by running head in head first into that burning building. They're firemen and women. They run straight in. I'm going to solve this problem. Let's keep working on it. And other people get out of the building. They shut the thing down, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to start this before I ask you questions, like start by acknowledging, man, you guys have built a hell of pressure to live up to, right? Mm -hmm. So number one, are you, um, do you have any abuse in your past? No. Okay. None that you can think of or just no? All good. I guess I, I guess it depends on the context. Um, sexual abuse, no. Physical abuse, no. Uh, my dad's a little rough around the edges, and okay. I think there's some emotional trauma that comes with that, but I wouldn't consider it abuse. Okay. So it depends on your definition. Okay. Um, are you on any sort of birth control? No. No? Just rocking and rolling? No. Uh, yeah, I learned how to natural family plan. Um, and when doing a lot of my research, I just determined that that was the best way to go. And so okay. far I've had no issues. Okay. Um, and I'm smiling <laughs> every time someone's like, nah, dude, we're just, we're just doing it natural. Those are always my friends that ended up with their kids first, but you do you, you do you. Um, <laughs> um, okay. So, and the reason I asked that is it, before I did anything, I would go see my doctor about hormones. Okay. 100% okay. before you do anything else. Before we have any more conversations, before you go see a counselor, I would have you go get your hormones checked. Um, the reg hormone regulation is all over the place. And depending on what rabbit hole you go down, it can be diet related. It can be, you know, experience related. It can be genetic. Who cares? Who It, it just is. So I would go have all of those things checked. Have you done that? I have not. Okay. So okay. that's a good idea. Okay. I would do that. Third, is your husband, you love him. I know that. Is he a jerk or a bully or a, why won't you do this? Or I want this. Um, yeah, pretty much. Okay. That has to stop because your yeah, body, I know. your body's trying to protect you. Yeah. I had a feeling that was what the answer to this was going to be. Tell me about him. Um, <laughs> so, um, we met, I'm actually originally from Buffalo. Um, I met him when we, when I moved to Pittsburgh, when I, after I graduated from college, um, and he is someone who has an addictive personality. Mm -hmm. He's also incredibly particular and it leads to just like endless nitpicking about the most ridiculously little things. Some of it seems unnecessary a lot of the times um i deal with it i have a pretty thick skin so you know i kind of let it roll off my back i think the problem is is that it doesn't really roll on my back nope and then it manifests in other ways like this bessel um, van der kolk wrote the book and in the title of the book is the body keeps the score yeah you can be yeah. tough buffalo gal all day long and buffalo gals are tough make no mistake right <laughs> um but I, your body might say, oh, you're not leaving? Okay, cool. We're shutting the system down. Yeah, I think that's what's been going on. Um, and a lot of times, especially new couples, with, and again, I say this with all due respect, and if he was on the phone, I would say this to him directly, okay? Um, he can have a quote-unquote addictive personality, or he can have OCD, or he can have ADHD, he can have all these things. He can also be an ass. <laughs> Right? Yeah. So you can have all that stuff. Great. That's a context. It's not an excuse to be disrespectful to your wife. It's not an excuse to not help create an environment where she feels, her body feels safe enough to be sexual. And nitpicking and why not this? Hey, man, why are you wearing that? And oh my gosh, you need to lose five pounds. All that crap. Like that's creating a world that sex becomes, it, 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 it's a place that sex and intimacy can't inhabit. Because the world is so toxic. And here's what often happens. You become his mom. You start taking over responsibility for making sure he feels okay. 
and it's really hard to want to have sex with your kids. Yeah. I think, I think for me, it's actually more the other way of like, it'd be like having sex with my dad because I spent okay. most of my childhood kind of, again, playing into making sure that my dad stays calm or wow. quiet okay. or whatever. And I think this feels very similar. Okay. Um, and so instead of like necessarily your kid, it feels more like very, it's very similar to my childhood. Gotcha. Um, okay. There we go. So, um, here's, here's your, here's your path forward. Okay. And I'm going to tell you, is, is, can you be real honest with me? Sure. Uh, is he abusive? No. Emotionally? I don't let him be emotionally abusive. That sounds really tough and cool. And I appreciate you uh, flexing. Is he emotionally abusive? I, I don't know. I really don't know if I can answer that. Like, I... Can sometimes? You, let me put I'm it... I'm struggling to say yes because I don't really want to say yes. There you because go. Because I don't know if I could... I don't want to say yes. Okay. <laughs> I will leave you to deal with your reality, but you know the truth. Mm -hmm. You also know that guys can wrap themselves up and I'm a good guy and they can be hyper abusive without ever saying a word. Their presence can hover around a home like a grizzly bear. And when you ask them, dude, what's wrong? Why are you always asking what I'm wrong? You're like driving me crazy because you're always nitpicking me. I'm just sitting here watching TV. Bull crap, dude. That whole thing was a flex just as much as if someone was yelling and screaming and smashing glasses up against the wall. It's just a slow nuclear reactor burn. Mm -hmm. And if you grew up with that in your home, your body knows you better disappear, kid. Right? Yeah, it it, it puts a like peacemaking filter on because that's what I did as a child. I was the peacemaker of the household. Right. And so then it, that becomes the priority of how do we end the conflict? And I will say I am sometimes equally as guilty as being explosive. Sure. But it takes me, I think, a lot longer to get there than it does. And he's not explosive and angry. It's just the criticism is never ending. Right. So here's what y'all are in desperate need of. Number one, before today's over, I want you to make a doctor's appointment to go get all of your hormone levels checked. Okay. It's going to cost money. It's going to be a pain in the butt. Go get it done. Okay, even if nothing else, you're 25, it'd be a great baseline to have as you get older, okay? Second thing is, you all need to call a marriage counselor today. And if he won't go, tell him we have to learn how to communicate because I'm not safe in this marriage anymore. My body's shutting itself down and I've got to find a different way to live. I want you to come with me. And when you go to counseling, you are gonna have to risk him getting up and walking out with your honesty, by saying things like, I'm not safe with you here, or you, I've, you've got to stop criticizing me because I can't stand before you with no clothes on and say, do you love me if you're always criticizing me and criticizing me and criticizing me and blaming me? I can't do that. He's got to hear that from you. And it sounds like he is not safe enough or, or, or that would be a smart conversation for you to have by yourself. So you need to go get a counselor and have that conversation. But what I'm telling you overall is you need to take drastic action. And again, we could talk about um, asexual and people who just have no sex drive. That's a whole other conversation. The last thing I want you to do, get Emily Nagotsky's book, Come As You Are. Order it on Amazon today. And I want you all to read it together. Emily Nagotsky's Come As You Are. Read it together. And it will be awkward for you all to read together. I get it. But it will give you all a new language and a new way to have this conversation about how do we create a world where my body feels safe enough that sex becomes exciting and fun. And what role are you, husband, going to play in helping me co-create that context, that world, that environment, that ecosystem? Go get that book today. Have it sent to your house and you all read it together. Thank you so much for your trust. And man, we will be rooting you on. Anytime you want to call, give me a shout. We'll be here. <laughs>